So first, a huge welcome to today's safe space workshop. If you're expecting something else, don't go away. Please stay here for this. Um, we're delighted to be sharing um, one of our solutions to help tackle race inequality. And we appreciate it's Black History Month. So many of you, I'm sure, have experienced a number of events. So we, we do value your time for joining us today. You are the change makers. You, um, so thank you all for your time this afternoon. You're really important to helping tackle race inequality. I'm Javid Thomas, co-founder of Race Quality Matters, along with the fantastic Raj Tulsiani of Green Park. Um, I'm also a founder of The Collaboratory, which creates collaborations to tackle societal issues that matter the most, and we do it through collaboration. I'm also joined today by a project manager, uh, Donna Robertson, who you'll be hearing from, and in the background, um, helping make this as smooth as possible, because I, I mess it up, um, is uh, Claire Watson from Race Quality Matters. So, uh, hello to them too as well. Um, next slide. Today's session will be fast paced, and importantly, it will be in interactive. Uh, there will be polls. Um, and Donna will walk you through the how to do it right guide. There will be collaborative discussion groups and we'll also be sharing the experiences of a couple of trailblazing organisations that have actually already delivered safe space so you hear from them and we'll look to finish by the lot of time of 5.45 um, as planned. Next slide please. Um, in today's session um, we're going to cover why safe space solution is needed and some key steps from the how to do it right guide. It's called how to do it right um, because I think that's quite important. A number of organisations or people do try initiatives or safe space, but it doesn't always go right. Um, so that's important. Um, to give you a bit of a background, um, Race Equality Matters is a not-for-profit. Next slide, please. And it aims to be a catalyst to move organisations and individuals from conversations to meaningful action as a real impact. So conversations are important, but that's not the end of it. Um, our current hashtag now is hashtag uh, action not just words. Uh, action is very important. As you may hopefully know, we co-create all these concepts and solutions in collaboration with those with lived experience of race inequality. So it's really important that they're at the heart of it. And the key is to help organizations like yourselves make the impact we all want to see and indeed feel. So some of the solutions hopefully you may know about it's race equality week. Second one ever is going to be um, 7th to 13th of February. It's always the first Monday in February annually so that's in your diaries now um tea break um and the big promise um and a new concept called my name is which we'll be explaining a bit more later uh, and of course the reason we're here today is safe space next slide please so my name is i'll explain it a time a bit later but so i do apologize for saying some people's names wrong um but I'll explain it is a common issue it's not an excuse it's a common issue but we've got an idea that was been co-created to see how we can tackle that and i said we'll, we'll touch upon that a bit later next slide please um thank you all of this is not possible because everyone's um this has all been offered for free and this is because we've got some fantastic funding supporters. So especially Green Park and Lifetime Visionary Partners BT. Um, their support means you can access all these resources for free. We are a not-for-profit and keen and indeed need further funding to keep this going. So if your organization would like to get involved, please do get in touch to find out more. It can be philanthropic, it can be for marketing purposes. Um, but what we want is everyone to have access to implement these solutions, hence that's why we're not charging. Okay, um, so if we go to the next slide, we'd like to do a quick poll, um, just to get a state of the nation. In the room, we have a, a third, our ethnic minority appropriate equivalent, and the rest are allies, so a very warm welcome to that. Um, good to know the mix. Um, have you downloaded a safe space workbook yet? Um, the majority not yet. Um, I think it's absolutely... Um, it's a tool to help. Um, so hopefully you'll um, download it after it, after today's event. How well do you think organization tackles race and equality, which is number three? Um, so not an all, not enough, about a third. Um, no one says really well, and a third are saying fairly well. So a bit of a mix across the board, which is a, an improvement, say, on 12 months ago. Have you noticed much change in your organization? Um, for, so it's about 50% said a fair amount or a great deal, which is great, but less than 50%, it's a little or not enough. Um, do you feel leaders and managers are committed to tackling race inequality? 69% said yes. So I think this is the highest group so far. Um, it has dramatically improved compared to a year ago. Uh, next question, number six. Do you think your, your leaders and managers are confident in talking about race? Um, so comfortable is 38%. Um, so that means the majority, you know, 62% uh, 
are not comfortable talking about race. And I think that says a lot um, in, in, in why it's not addressed as much as some other areas. Um, how important do you think um, it is for all employees to play a part? Absolutely vital. And I think that's absolutely crucial. You know, we all have a part to play in this. And um, do you think Feed Your Organization encourages all employees to tackle race inequality? So a third still saying no. Um, and question nine, action, not just words. How do you think your organization is focusing? Um, focus on making an act on action on making an impact 28% the rest talks a lot but little progress does very little so I think that's really important you know we need to change their numbers um, we were going to ask the question the youngest person in the room and just to name call um, Hayley as from Sacred Heart of Mary Girls School is at home alone with baby listening in so we have our winner there there you goes thank you for that uh, thank you for filling that so um, if we go on to the next slide please Okay, so what is safe space? It is a facilitated dialogue between three to five exco C-suite board members and up to 10 ethnic minority colleagues. Really important you get uh, more ethnic minorities represent in the safe space area. It is structured to enable brave conversations, facilitate uncomfortable discussions and drive meaningful change. They're the key elements to it. So to explain a bit more, if Claire can play the video, that'd be fantastic. Thank you. Race Equality Matters provides organisations with the tools, resources and skills to implement them. Race Equality Matters is not a talking shop. We inspire change by creating solutions and working with organisations to implement them. One of those solutions is Safe Space. Safe Space is a two hour facilitated dialogue between three to five senior leaders or exco and up to 10 ethnic minority colleagues. Safe Space will provide a protected environment to enable brave conversations in order to generate action, remain focused and achieve a meaningful outcome driven by the people it matters to. Safe Space will help you achieve facilitated meaningful dialogue between ethnic minority employees and their senior leaders who must be willing to make a commitment and take action to address some of the key issues raised. Safe Space is split into three distinct parts. One, inform and educate. Two, understand the issues. And three, take action. It is more than just a conversation. We also run safe space workshops and have a how to do it right guide, which focuses on finding the right people to participate and create a safe and constructive environment for these conversations to take place. This guide consists of four key phases and 11 steps with top tips and checklists to assist as well as a focus on well-being. This guide will enable brave conversations, facilitate uncomfortable discussions and drive meaningful change.
we're going to take you through the guide now, which has been created. Um, Eighty percent of organisations have asked for how to do it guide to implement our solutions. And I said they've been based on workshops and research that we can, uh, ran in collaboration with those with lived experience. Um, it's been created to assist the safe space project lead in an organization and a potential working group, which we'll touch upon. There are two point, uh, main points to note. First, it might sound obvious, it is a guide. It's, just, it's a guide to help you. So we, you implement it and, and um, adapt it that suits your organizations, um, fits your organizations. Secondly, and the one mandatory requirement is to have a facilitator in your session. And that's absolutely crucial to keep people safe. We're allowing uncomfortableness. People need to be kept safe. And Donna will explain more. Next slide, please. Um, in the guide, um, we've broken each step down into consistent sections. Um, there's a driving force. This identifies who is mainly responsible for each step or a specific step, why the step is in there, why it's needed. We then draw out key points and actions for each step. We've included helpful features such as ideas of what else you can do within it and links for additional uh, resources um, to support. There are also well-being alerts to remind you when it's critical to check in with colleagues. This has been also co-created um, with Mental Health First Aid England. Absolutely, um, people's well-being is absolutely crucial to this. So I'll now hand you over to Donna, who'll walk through the first part of the safe space journey. Thank you, Donna. Good afternoon and thanks so much for joining us today. We're going to start our journey at step one and phase one, and this is all about making safe space safe. You need to assure the psychological safety and well-being of the participants. They may feel vulnerable and concerned about, and about negative repercussions in terms of their career and mental health or how they might be judged or perceived. And our workshops have highlighted that one of the key concerns ethnic minority employees have about taking part is the risk of negative repercussions on their work relationships and careers. So you may want to consult with them and ask them what concerns they have and what would make them feel safe. We recommend that you create a psychological safety statement that's signed by the board, as this endorsement will also encourage people to be honest and open during the session. And you'll find um, an example in the resources, in the resource pack on the website. Give some thought to meeting rules and behaviors. So use the Chatham House rule so people can use the information received, but they're not allowed to identify or affiliate anything to any of the participants. And sort of talking about race equality issues can be really draining and can take a, a toll on mental health. So ensure that participants are empowered to ask for support and check in with them before, during and after the safe space session. Um, you provide support or signpost them to further sources of support. And again, you'll find um, some links in the resource pack uh, on, on the website. So next slide. So the next phase of our journey is all about finding the right people. And the first step is to find a project lead, someone who's a change maker. So identify someone that's going to bring energy, focus and continuity to the initiative and look for people passion, people skills, resourcefulness, someone who's trusted and respected, also someone who's well connected and someone who's persistent. Brief them on safe space so they have the right information to understand the scope of their role, get their agreement to be the lead and then ask them what else they might need support wise. And the next slide. So step three is about finding your senior sponsor. So research has found that having senior endorsement is a driver for success when it comes to diversity and inclusion. They will champion safe space and help you engage with the board um, and also access resources if needed. So we recommend that you approach senior leaders who have influence and authority, as well as a passion for race equality and driving change. So explain what safe space is, its benefits, why senior leadership involvement is critical and what's expected of them. And again, there's more in the guide about that too. So next slide. So we're on to step four. And that this is all about consulting with colleagues. And it's a great way to build your case for safe space and also get insight into the type of questions to ask during the session, as they'll be able to help you identify key issues that could be addressed by the organization. They can also help you promote awareness of 
with the initiative internally as well. So think about the questions you'll ask them, how you'll reach them. And this could be through your race networks or surveys and make sure that you allocate enough time to gather the information and also sort of, um, signpost them again to additional support if, if necessary. Next slide. So step five is all about securing senior board or exco buy-in, and this is crucial to safe space. So the board has the power to make change happen, and that's why they're essential to the safe space initiative. They will need to know about the benefits of running safe space, what it is, who needs to be involved, and that would ideally be three to five uh, board exco members, um, what's required, and next steps. Um, it's important that you ask for a decision to run safe space as well as getting their agreement to participate and their commitment to take action on at least one of the issues raised during the session. Next slide. So when you've got their agreement, step six is all about creating a task and finish group to help you shape, drive and implement safe space. So if you look for a diverse group, and we also recommend that you appoint a chair to help focus and coordinate the group's efforts. It's also a good idea to draft terms of reference so everyone's clear on the group's responsibilities. And there's more on that again in the pack. And next slide. Um, and step seven of the journey is about finding your employee participants. So ideally, you'll need about 10 ethnic minority colleagues. And you should, again, you should consider a representative and diverse group of people. Um, think about the selection criteria, the process, how you're going to reach them. Um, and you'll find an outline of key things they might want to know and messages you might want to include in the pack. And um, when you've selected them, remember again to um, signpost them to uh, additional support. So that's it from me for now. I'm going to hand back over to Javed. Brilliant. Thank you, Donna. Um, so before we cover the next uh, set of steps, I uh, want to give you the opportunity to collaborate amongst yourselves and share ideas in discussion group. So the theme of this one will be how will you go about engaging or finding a senior sponsor and board exco members. So how do you go about it? Now, for some, it might may not have a clue. Others have got experience um, ways of that. So the idea is we're gonna split you all into um, groups of between six and eight uh, for about seven minutes, um, where you have an opportunity just to share some ideas from each other, how you might go about it. Um, so this discussion group is just to help you start thinking about it. Um, there is no wrong um, suggestions or answers. It's good stuff coming through there. I think it's, I think someone said just ask or email. I, I think, you know, all there's been a lot of organisations really saying, you know, we care, we must do more. So this is a chance to test it. Um, and, you know, you know, I think our key thing is this has been co-created by those with lived experience for race inequality, suggesting this will help make an impact. So, um, yeah, so, um, and I said in, in our guide, we have some words or um, language you may want to use to put to, towards your scene leaders etc so i said we will share all this information with uh, anonymously but we'll share it with everyone afterwards um uh for an event we now go to um step eight which donna will take you through so the we're now on the third phase um which is all about preparing and going live and step eight as javid said so now you have your task and finish group to help plan it step eight is all about getting ready and there are a few things about to think about in advance so javid mentioned earlier that one mandatory element is having a good facilitator so you need someone who will manage the conversation sensitively and robustly while ensuring the session is kept on track it could be someone internal or if resources permit, uh, you could have an external facilitator too. Ad in advance of the session, encourage board members to think about the questions they want to ask. Um, and remember, it's not just about the questions they'll ask, but also how to ask them. So it's important to do some preparation in advance of the session so you get the most value out of it as possible. You'll also need to think about things like agendas, running orders and logistics. And again, the pack has lots of advice around that and templates to help you with it too. So next slide. 
So we're now on step nine, which is about running the session. So we've suggested two hours um, to cover a minimum of three key issues. So it's really important to have an agenda with timings on it, just so that you can manage that, that session. Allow time for introductions. And the facilitator's role is to keep the conversation on track, ensuring that there are fair opportunities for everyone to speak. Um, they'll also focus the discussion on the key issues and explore why there are issues, what the evidence is for them, and what it would mean if the organization were to take action to address them too. Um, remember to summarize the key points and agree the next steps. Now, the next steps will depend on your discussion. So it could be that you agree to collate more information and evidence, or it could be that you're ready to go on to the next step, which is for the board or Exco team to discuss the key issues and decide uh, which ones to take action on and that's it from on the meeting now so we just would like to show a video of one of our trailblazers coin street who within about a month or two have actually gone and run a safe space so if we can show the coin street video please So since the death of George Floyd, uh, the staff members himself have been running what we've been calling safe space sessions. They were okay, but they weren't really meaningful. Um, there was no action that was being taken. Also, despite them being called safe spaces, people didn't really feel that safe to speak up about things that were affecting them. Uh, so we joined the Race Equality Network last year, and during uh, the Race Equality Week, we launched a number of campaigns, and one of which was to relaunch the Safe Space um, Workshop following the Race Equality Network's How to Do It Right Guide. So we followed the guide and we sort of adapted it a bit, but um, we used that guide as a basis. Before this, I um, spoke to Rahima, shared the guide with her and made sure that she understood and she was comfortable running it. I felt like she was the most suitable person in the organization to do this because although she's not a trained facilitator or mediator, she was undertaking a coaching qualification. So I felt that she would know how to ask the right questions, how to encourage all the participants to take part and obviously also facilitate the conversation. So this is where I um, took up um, kind of engaging people. So what I did was send individual emails out and had conversations with colleagues from ethnic minority backgrounds about the email. So I didn't just assume that everybody had seen it. I kind of um, spoke to everybody and said, had they seen it? What were their thoughts on it? Um, how comfortable were they to attend? And how comfortable they were to challenge the leadership team? And the other thing that I asked was, what is it that I could do to help them to engage with the workshop? So for me, um, I created um, a PowerPoint with a few slides, to, uh, including reminders and prompts as facilitator to support me. I got to know the guide really well. I did keep in contact with Melanie throughout because my work at, uh, on, on, uh, with the employees, I wanted to make sure that that was correlated and that we were getting interest. I was very conscious that I didn't want, Melanie and I were conscious that we didn't want a top heavy um, kind of meeting, that there was more leadership people than there were participants. Um, so the running of the session, um, the session was held over Zoom and Melanie arranged most of the logistics around this. We established ground rules, the rules. So I'd set some ground rules and said, this is what um, we'd have as ground rules, but offered the opportunity for people to add whatever they felt was appropriate as well. Um, we shared the agenda and I did follow the timings so as, as Javid said earlier. Um, I kind of talked to everybody, so including the leadership team, that this is the person who will ask the first question, then the second, third and fourth, and then participants as well. I, they knew when I was going to come to them. So they had three people that were very willing to speak and ask questions. And I said, after this person is speaking, it will be you. So I kind of assured them and helped them to be a part of the session. Um, so the session was great. It was fantastic. It was awkward. It was uncomfortable. Um, at the end of it, I felt really exhausted because it's quite emotionally, it's quite draining. 
um, but I also felt exhilarated. It felt like the penny had finally dropped for some of the some people who just had no um, idea that some of the things that colleagues from ethnic minority backgrounds have to put up with. It was moving, uh, like Rahima said, some people did get upset. Made sure to follow up with them, um, you know, point them in the right direction to get ish, additional support. But most importantly, Rahima followed up with each person individually to check in with them that they were okay. Um, so my top tips are to choose your facilitator carefully. That's really important. For us, it made sense to have someone internal who could speak to our staff and really gain their trust. Um, secondly, I'd say the guidance often talks about being comfortable with uncomfortable conversations. Um, I would add that you need to be comfortable with silence because you will get that. And a trained facilitator um, will be comfortable with that, with that and not try and fill the silence. Um, finally, Rahim and I had worked with the leadership team ahead of the session, as Rahima mentioned, to help them develop the questions that they wanted to ask the group, one of which was the, you know, the BAME question that Job had mentioned previously. That part of the conversation was actually really important because not only does it help break the ice with the participants, uh, because the leadership team are actually doing a lot of the talking up front and asking up front, we actually learned a lot more during that session uh, than we thought we would. And actually some of the actions that came out of the end of the safe space session, you know, some of it was from those initial conversations. So um, that's a really important stage not to miss. So just to pick up on some things. So um, um, as the session's in sort of three parts, so some of the questions the senior leaders will ask, um, which outside the room could be seen as um, uh, ignorant, um, racist or, or uncomfortable, too risky to ask. But they ask question, what is the problem with the term BAME to understand different perspectives? You know, shall we still call our network the BAME network? Or microaggressions, can you clarify the difference between microaggression and banter? So it's a ch just a chance to hear from people in that safe space to explain what it is. And it gives the leaders the opportunity, okay, we, we will change this. We understand this is happening throughout the country company on that side so they were some of the examples um, that coin street have experienced what we'd like to do now is go into a second breakout session i know a couple of people in our group mentioned it they got senior leaders on board all right but how do we get the ethnic minority colleagues engaged i said it'll be faster dynamics so our, our group went went very quick i think one key thing came came out so in, in our group um an organization does have like a couple of networks so it's, it's got quite um access to quite a good ethnic minority community um, but the numbers coming forward might be a challenge. And one, one word that came up um, uh, by another organization was actually the, the trust. Will, will the ethnic minority trust by coming forward? And I think that's absolutely crucial. So I think if we all think about that word, um, so one, one, one suggestion is what you can do is ask the ethnic minority community and through the race network or whoever represent, you know, say, what can we do to, to, to be, for you to trust us what do we need to show or demonstrate and that's why the psychological um safety statement is important it says you know if you look at it and it's been done by the cipd the one we're using you know saying this is what we will commit to as senior leaders you know there'll be no consequences or repercussions on it uh and it is it, it, a trust gate but again um and rahima who you heard earlier she's only one person came forward initially in her organization so she went around and spoke to people, say, here's a real chance. I really believe this is going to be OK. And then they did it. And as a result, they had trust. Um, so they had action as well. And that's why you know, Rahima and Melanie are, are willing to share their story, because they want to encourage others to do it. Um, I, I, I ran a, a, a mental health campaign seven, eight years ago when mental health was a um, uh, taboo subject, stigma. No one will talk about it. A few people came forward and were the brave ones in their organizations and obviously scared of repercussions if I tell them I'm, I've got mental health challenges. But as a result, it made a huge difference in some of these organizations, big ones, including you know, PwC, Barclays. Now 800 organizations are running that concept, you know, or be, people sharing their story, um, et cetera. So I think trust is a key, key, key idea. If we just have 20 seconds to share tips of how could we engage um, the ethnic minority colleagues in the chat, that'd be fantastic. You know, how, how do we encourage them to sign up? Because this will not work without the ethnic minorities. Great stuff coming through. And I said, we will share this with everyone after a week and all gave this. And there was a couple of words there about, you know, involved, trusted people, you know, or people of influence and everything like that. So I think that's quite um, a, a good thing. Interesting service and um, pay people for their time. 
I think, you know, there is, you know, we need to value people's time and show it's a professional, important part of the business. So I think good suggestion there, but I said, we'll share more of these afterwards. So we'll go to um, next part of the journey. Um, so um, back to Donna. So we're now in the fourth phase and um, of our journey and step 10 um, is a crucial element of safe space and it's about taking action. And the board needs to, so following the events that you've run, the board needs to discuss the key issues raised during the session and decide which ones they're gonna act on. So we recommend that the part, safe space participants meet with the board to hear which issues will be addressed. And importantly, ethnic minority colleagues must be involved in the task and finish groups that are set up to address any of these issues. And this is based on feedback from our workshops with ethnic minority employees. So next slide. Um, step 11 is our final step and it's all about monitoring progress. It's critical to understand if anything's changed and you need to measure the impact of actions that have been taken. So we recommend that you also review the safe space experience with colleagues, track progress on action and impacts. And really, really importantly, um, we are always looking to showcase case studies of organizations that have run our solutions so that we can inspire others to do the same. So tell us about your activity and share, share your experiences with us. Um, we'd love to feature your organization as a case study. So that's all the steps covered. And I'm going to pass you back over to Javid now. Thank you, Donna. Um, so that was like a whistle stop tour of going through the steps, which is in the guide with more information. And I said, we'll, we'll share these slides and the recording um, uh, most of the next week with yourselves. Um, what we'd like to do is before we go into a final breakout session, we'll share a final video of another trailblazer, Amy. Um, and they've driven a lot of actions as a result of safe space. So we want to, would like to share this with you. Thank you, Claire. I work better, I'm focused, I'm driven because I can see there's something at the end of the tunnel now, whereas before I was just a, I felt like I was just an employee. I had a meeting with somebody who just, all I wanted was to change their, um, she, her, on her email signature. We changed that. That's, we asked the manager, is that okay? Yes, no issue, no problem. She's gone from being this quiet, shy person to this amazing, fantastic speaker, confident, she's doing amazing at work now she, she's she's got a strut in her voice everything's mm -hmm. positive mm -hmm. and that's just because she knows there's a there's a space where she can come to where people are genuinely going to listen to them and to listen to her and she's going to say this is my concern what can you do and it's mm -hmm. it's changing people people not just myself others in the business are becoming focused they're believing there's going to be change because it has to be in terms of actions we had five clear actions that came out of the group from reviewing our recruitment process I think the most critical one for me was reviewing the talent process and how we get um, ethnic minority people promoted because loud and clear people who are uh, from an ethnic minority background feel they have to work three times as hard to be promoted and I'd, 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 I'd never heard that before and I've really learned that and as an HR professional I feel really embarrassed that I didn't know that before um, but we've really looked at how we can um, change our talent process to accelerate um, promotions um, we've we've been asked to refresh our leadership coaching and we've done that we've all, we're ready to launch a general leadership coaching session um, in the next two weeks and actually next week Kelvin and I with Michael the group HR director are running a race equality session which we've expanded out to a bit more wider inclusion um, with the top 100 leaders in our organization and all of that has come from the safe space we wouldn't have done that and we wouldn't have done it as quickly um, had we not run the safe space the last thing that we wanted to share with you is, is really the top tips. And Kelvin, I think 
it, yeah. it's really right to stop and finish with you on that. Yeah. So with regards to our top tips, just three things we need, three things. It's someone that understands. So it's someone that feels how you feel. And that for us was Carol. Uh, me and Carol have something in common that people don't really realise. When we say mm-hmm. we've got something in common, people say, really? I said, yes, we've got something in common. And I can trust her implicitly. Whatever I say to her, if I ask for it to be private, it will go nowhere else. And that comes hand in hand. The second thing for us is honesty. You have to be able to be honest. Um, you have to encourage yourself to be honest. If you put yourself in a vulnerable position, the people in that meeting will put themselves in a vulnerable position and they'll be honest. And what you'll find is you can change things when there's a lot of honesty. Mm-hmm. And the third most important thing, it has to be safe. It has to be safe. What's said in that meeting, no matter what it said, who said, even if it's something that you think, you know what, I can change that right now. It's not necessarily what people want. They don't want things changed right now. Sometimes they just want to be listened to and heard. So as much as you think, yep, let's go and change that. No, because sometimes that person may feel that they're going to get outed. Mm. And people of colour already know they don't want to be outed. They want to just keep their head down and get on with their job. So if it's safe, it has to be 100% safe. That's a, great, that's a great point because over three sessions, we had a leadership issue raised. And in the first two sessions, nobody wanted to talk about it. And in the third session, we finally got somebody to open up and talk about it. And we're now dealing with that leadership issue. Um, but it took three sessions for the trust to be there to allow us to deal with the leadership issue. And it's quite a serious leadership issue, but it's being dealt with. It's being dealt with confidentially. And the person who's raised it has the confidence in us to do that well. And that's so don't push it is, is I think what we're saying is. Things will come up that you you want to jump on and you want to deal with, but you have to do it when that individual is ready. I think that answers a couple of questions. So one one is they've demonstrated, you know, trust is absolutely important and finding the right person. In this case for Kelvin, it was uh, Carol. Um, And the other thing is organisations will run safe space slightly different. So they've actually, they, they ran three safe spaces to, to help um get get it along i think someone asked us is it is it a one-off yes and yes and no you know it, it's, it's not a weekly thing but sometimes we, we think organization may do it uh, and then maybe six months later need to do another one you know while the other because pro- some of the things that need to tackle might take three six twelve months to address but the, but you need to keep everyone posted that progress is happening so what we'd like to do is go into a final breakout room for again uh, seven minutes um, to share ideas about how can you keep the momentum going and everyone updated on progress and measuring. I think people were saying, you know, you know, there has to be um, action and there has to be change. I think the key thing just to share um, in, in our group, people were at different stages actually um, in, in their organization. Um, so progress is talk, keep progress going and keep sharing it and um, how, you, how you're going about it. Um, but, but, but also is um, to keep people informed that there is change happening and, and, and important is actions happening. So, you know, it's not it's just a discussion. Having a discussion in a safe environment is not safe space as we got up. I want to call it safe space version two or plus or whatever it's action has to be taken beyond it and and so um you know really really important what we'd like to do is we we want to share a bit more information about some other things coming up and some things that might add value to your safe space or or help some organization might be struggling but if we could just do a quick poll final poll this helps us um understand what's working in today's event or how we can make it better um so um most people feel fairly uh, confident to, to very confident um, following today, which is which is helpful. The most important thing for us is when do you think you'll run look to run safe space? Um, so 14% December to January. And then um, the majority um, in race equality week, um, which is great. So again, you have two, three months is plenty of time to get yourselves ready for it. Um, that's great. Uh, and an important thing is, um, do you feel um, it will help tackle race inequality in your organization? And um, trying to do my maths here, 76, 88% think it will create change 
to, to a great deal to significant. So that's the majority. We can share the results now, Claire, I think. Um, so hope you can see. And so if we go down to question nine, that was, and in question 10, I said, we'll, we'll share some of these results with you after. Um, do you think it'll help um, leaders access, so address race inequality? Do you think it will help leaders address race inequality? 80% said yes. So I think, yeah, that that's those that are genuinely do care about tackling it. This is um, something that, you know, the majority of you here feel can, can make a difference. Okay, thank you. Um, so that's great. So um, what we'd just like to wrap up with and let you know some other things that might be helpful. So next month we have some buddy circles. Um, so we have a safe space buddy circle um, on the 18th of November where it's a smaller group. Um, just between maybe six and ten of you, uh, where we'll have one of our, our trailblazers, an organisation that has run it. So it's a much more, it's more of a like discussion group, quite, quite, quite relaxed and informal, where you can just say, I'm stuck on step four or, or how do we do this or you know we we've been trying to get our ethnic minority um, colleagues to take part but they won't uh and then the other one there is tea break and tea break um is in a sense of is, is for some organization maybe struggling not quite ready for safe space because it is i'm gonna say quite intense in that sense tea break is something for all the whole organization you can all be on zoom or teams anonymous so you can have your screen off have initials you know K -K kl if, you, if, if that's what you want and then, um, and then basically it's, it's talk about a topic or an issue. So, you know, some organizations use microaggressions versus banter. Others have used um, things like um, uh, about talks about hair or, you know, some have talked about, you know, arranged marriages where, but it's a real clever way because the original concept is from um, Network Rail and we built this with, um, ethnic minority colleagues across the country um, way to understand more about how people are thinking and feeling some organizations ran it after three england footballers that missed the penalties got racially abused so they talked about it it was a really good chance to to get across the organization an organization and taking action and actually moving on to say space on the back end of it or vice versa they've done safe space and now they're running tea breaks so definitely something to look out for and that's on our website so next slide uh, on the 10th of November, we're, um, I've talked about names. So we carried out some uh, research and 73% of people that fed back said they have had their name mispronounced. And I'm sure, and I do apologize, I've done it for some people today. And it makes people feel um, it, it, they think it's rude or um, in, in, it's not inclusive, makes them feel not wanted or disrespected. And we know, especially in some cultures, the name is so important. But well, people are giving themselves nicknames uh, or, or being given nicknames or having to abbreviate their names. Um, so what um, we want to do is, is run an initiative where actually um, on our, on, we, in our, on our names, like on our email footers or on LinkedIn and social media, we start having our name, but also phonetics phonetically spelling our name so it helps the person get it you're more likely to get it right and again so my name I've been called in a number of different ways of pronouncing my name but I, I put in a ja as in Japan ved rhymes with head so that's that's one way of doing it so um and um so um that's something that we're inviting you to and we want a thousand organizations to adopt this and it's something that can be done overnight so if you're not ready for a safe space you know, why can't your organization encourage um uh, my name is and we know some organizations even talk about having on name badges of people so when you see somebody uh spoke to a policeman actually said even on the police they, they might start having phonetic names on there to um, help um relationships in, in the community a uh, long way to go for them I, I admit um so okay that's that one uh the next slide please um we have our three-month countdown um uh to race quality matters and so again we're gonna have lots of um mini breakouts where you can learn from what are other organizations doing for race equality week because you can get some good ideas from from there uh and that's on the 16th of november so book your free place there um and uh finally we have a second in our series of race network leaders and future leaders events on the 23rd November, sponsored by our friends at Auto Trader. So this is um, um, to help skill up and provide um, help for all people and individuals that run networks um, that may struggle with, because quite often, you know, it's part-time, you're not trained or, or have the experience maybe to run, run, run a successful network for lots of different reasons, but we're given these skills for, for free. Um, so again, um, we will send some links to this after, but it's all on our website. 
final slide. Um, a huge thank you to, um, we have to say thank you to our partners and sponsors. As mentioned, we are not for profit and we'd like to help um, keep this going for free for yourselves. Uh, and so any funding or sponsorship of market opportunities, please do let us know. Uh, thank you for your time. We know it's, it's gone into the evening. Um, at least it's not sunny outside, so you've not missed anything there, uh, unless someone's um, in, in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, we look forward to hearing about your safe, safe experiences. Use hashtag safe space and hashtag action, not just words. Thank you to Donna and Claire behind the scenes, and thank you all for your time. Have a good evening.